is we we import I mean we export about 98 uh, billion worth of uh, goods mostly oil yeah. but we import about 70 billion so of the 98 that we're selling we're putting 70 back into somebody else's economy because manufactured goods uh, represent the bulk of that 70 billion that we put out there. But the states too can help in this one because they also have their budgetary allocations. So lots of responsibility for the state government as well. Oh, absolutely. Definitely. I mean, because they're the ones that are closer you know, to the people. They're the ones that know where the people are hurting. And so they're the ones that need to put the money where the people can get the benefit of it. And so when we say government, I mean, we mean everybody. I'm sorry, uh, those who are doing a great job, kudos to them, but the majority are not. And so we need to hold them accountable. They need to stop waiting for uh, uh, budgetary allocation. Start looking for ways where uh, your state you know, will start generating uh, a foreign exchange from other sources. Uh, from uh, reading the, the Agricultural Digest uh, now and again, uh, we have cocoa, which was the mainstay uh, of this country for a while. Cocoa, rubber, uh, uh, platinum, tin, aluminum. All of these we have you know, left behind. The cocoa seeds that we have now are outdated. Our trees are old. Yet, you know, if you, even though uh, imitation cocoa has you know, already uh, you know, shut that door, but our governors need to go back and be creative and generate funds for you know, their, their citizens and improve their lifestyles. It, it, it behooves us as, as leaders you know, to, to, to do what we promise to do when we came into power. Well, there you have it. So, in other words, uh, if they have to even do any sort of measurements, we should talk about manufacturing, agriculture, power. These are very, very key sectors. Exactly. And infrastructure. Uh, Our roads. We need rail. And there's nothing stopping us from having a rail uh, line all the way from Lagos on the coast to the northernmost part of this country. An expressway should connect this whole country. That, I mean, for, for example, the, the US I-95, you can start from, right from Florida, and it gets you to the coast of Maine. Just smooth ride. Why don't we have that? So and we clearly. can afford it, too. All right. Well, clearly, uh, so uh, there you have uh, some assessment, to say the least, but we have to thank you for coming on. Uh, Professor Abiola Awushika, Faculties and Economies, and also Rector of Olawan U School of Innovative Studies. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you very much. All right, we'll be back in just a moment. Please join us again. If you like to browse, call, or text, you need EasyFlex. I'll show you. Most people work with a budget. This amount for calls. This amount for SMS. And this amount for data. Not very flexible, is it? With EasyFlex from Etisalat, all you need is one plan. You simply pay once. And you get reduced tariffs on calls, data, and SMS. You also get more than double of the value you paid for to call any network, browse, and send SMS. If it's really affordable, it should be flexible. Abby, choose your plan with Flex 300, Flex 500, and Flex 1000. Etisola, now you're talking. Some say it's a sharp pain. Some might even say it's a shocking pain. And it's usually caused by hot, cold drinks. It definitely affects the quality of life. The treatment for tooth sensitivity can be very simple. 
Brushing with Sensodyne twice daily will give you long-lasting protection from tooth sensitivity. Sensodyne works inside the tooth and it soothes the nerve and then the patient will have a relief of their pain. Sensodyne can be used every day. You don't have to use another toothpaste. For me to have a toothpaste that solves that problem so simply is what I like about Sensodyne. We are living witnesses to the challenges that we have faced as a nation. The challenge of development, the challenge of underdevelopment. But above all, the challenge of conflict and crisis. The challenge of internal security. And so if you juxtapose all these challenges vis-a-vis -vis where we are today from where we are coming, it is only fair to say that for this administration, in spite of all the challenges, it has been a harvest of achievements. Welcome back. Well, yes, indeed, uh, we're joined now by Richard Wanko, who is a legal practitioner and also of the Crusade for Justice. Morning, and thank you for coming on today. Uh, thank you very much. Well, as we continue our focus on this uh, mid-term report of the president, of course, we do know the judiciary, a very important part of this entire uh, piece. What would your assessment be in terms of what you've seen, how the judiciary has held on, and what they should be doing? Well, I, I think the judiciary has not done so badly within this period. But there, of course, we know that there are a huge leeway for very drastic improvements. And uh, my only contention is that these uh, openings are not being effectively utilized. Openings? Well, yes. What, which ones? For constant purification of the system. Um, if you followed what happened recently, the military section of uh, Justice OKK, a lot of uh, issues, you know, were brought up in the in his speech, where he talked about uh, the pressures that were mounted on him when he handled the Amcon case, and uh, how the whole thing uh, uh, blew up to the point that uh, he was officially cautioned, and uh, I think uh, that given the revelations that came. It is only natural that the, the agency should step in and uh, critically investigate that matter. But it appears that everybody is asking and uh, nothing is, is being done. Would you say the same thing about the judiciary with respect to our fight against corruption? Well, oh, there is absolutely no community without Judas. <laughs> and, and, and I think uh, the judiciary, of course, has a very huge represent representation in that, in that segment. The, what we expect them to do is that they should be very, 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 very firm in dealing with some of those issues. Of course, you know, the present CJ ha CJN has taken some drastic steps. And uh, it's rather comical if the CJN is telling the nation that uh, if a judge fails to deliver a minimum of four judgments in a year, that uh, such judges should be sanctioned. The implication of that is that I can combine judicial job with my law practice now. Really? That's the implication. The implication is that what is actually on the ground means that you can stay on the bench and not give, give a judgment in the, in, the, in the whole year. How, how would that is happen? It, is it not ridiculous that some judges give as little as four judgments in a year? That is one judgment per quarter. And she is giving that as a template now. So the implication is that a lot of figures, a lot of individuals and a lot of judicial officials fall below that, below that benchmark. So it, it, it's, 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 it's quite surprising what is going on in the judiciary. I, I think that the, 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 the CJN and the entire institution should be firm. And of course, you know, the, the, the constitution of NJC, a lot of issues, a lot of comments have been made in that respect. The constitution of NJC is grossly skewed. We have a, and a very huge, very sensitive organization like the NJC. You have the appointing power resting solely on the CJN. It's, it's, it's unacceptable. So these are some of the issues. And uh, of course, uh, we, we expect that some of these reactions should be generalized. So what we see are sporadic, you know, flashes. These things should be done in such a way that uh, people can predict 
If something is going on, you can predict the reaction of the state. Not once in a while you see such a comment. The issues raised by Justice Okege at this critical moment ought to have been, you know, taken over by the NJC. And one striking element that one striking